In this quick video, we're going to take a look at how to create anisotropic highlights in Unreal Engine. This will be useful to achieve highlights that you would find on surfaces with a grain or fine directional noise on them, like the bottoms of cooking pots or pans and brushed or machined metals. In this video, we'll cover how to adjust the anisotropic highlight direction, how to create some of these patterns directly in the material editor through nodes, as well as how to convert grayscale directional maps to tangent maps. To begin, I'll just right click and create a new material, call it M underscore anisotropic, and we'll open up our material editor. And you should see something like this. And what we're going to be doing here also applies to if you were using substrate, if you're not using substrate in the newer versions of Unreal 5.2 and up, uh, this also applies to previous versions of Unreal, uh, going back down all the way to version five, I believe. So what we'll find in here in our material is that we have a tangent connection here and this will be able to allow us to connect maps that can change the direction of this fine grain or noise on the surface that will affect how its highlight looks. Now a lot of the time if you think of a frying pan or brushed metal it has really tiny grains etched in it and technically in CG or in computer graphics or games you think maybe if we sculpted in all those little lines or had normal maps that described all those little lines, then we'd have the proper thing achieved and get proper highlights. The problem with that is it'll be very hard to sample and to calculate how those materials should look with the highlights properly. You'll end up with a bunch of noise. So we have this control called anisotropy, which allows us to pretty much stretch the specular highlight either vertically or horizontally with a certain intensity. And then we have this tangent connection, which can allow us to have more complex directionality in that specular highlight. So just a quick test of how this, this works. I'm just going to take ba base color, connect that to a constant, set it to one, connect that to metallics. We're treating this as like a we're going to treat it as pretty much like a chrome. So roughness will be not zero. You need to have a little bit of blurriness to see the, the anisotropic highlights. So we'll do 0 0.1. And now we see our little highlight right there of the sun. So if we look at that highlight and we take our anisotropy here and we connect a constant at zero, it's even in both directions. At positive values, 0.5, it stretches it horizontally. Negative values, negative 0.5, it stretches it vertically. And if you go really extreme, like negative 0.9 or 0.9, then you really start to see that highlight stretch. So that's kind of our anisotropic highlights. Now that's only stretching it in one direction or the other, horizontally or vertically. What if we want to change that to kind of go in rings or circles along the surface? It kind of does that right now. If you look at the top, you, you see the highlight going like a a ring like this, or if I set it to negative 0.9, it goes outwards from that center. That feels like the bottom of a of a frying pan or maybe the smooth surface of like a machined dial or something. So that that's kind of the effect we want. But if we look at something like a plane right now, it doesn't give us that effect. It's just stretching the highlights either vertically or horizontally. So how can we get that effect on here where the center is a bit of a pinch and those highlights uh, go outwards from that center? Well, what we can do is start adding things to our tangent map here. So that's the next thing that we're going to start to do. Now, if you're used to shading in other renders, offline renders, non-game engines, you might be wondering, you know, you'd probably use something maybe like this pattern here. I'm just going to bring in this texture and you do something like that to describe the anisotropic highlight direction. Because if we think of this as a directionality map, it goes from zero or, or black all the way around to one. So that's kind of the directionality of our surface. If that color or that brightness is referring to angle or direction. 
but we can't use this because a tangent map is not looking for a black and white map. If we connect this in here, a grayscale map, it doesn't really give us uh, the effect that we expect. So it's, it's not going to work. So let's think about how we can create this pattern uh, without using a texture map. Well, what we could do is we could do this fully kind of procedurally or through through nodes. If we take a texture coordinate node and we preview it, that gives us texture coordinates where zero is kind of the starting point of our texture coordinates and then it goes to one. So if we were to connect that into our tangent map, what do we end up getting? We get the pinch on the top left corner where the zero value is, and then it goes out from there, circular to the one value down here. So that kind of works, but how can we get that pinch to be in the center here? Well, if we look at this texture coordinate, all we really need to do is subtract 0.5 from it, and that will move this point here to the center, and then this point here will become negative, I guess it would become negative uh, values, which is fine. And then this at the center here would be exactly zero. So it pretty much end up just offsetting this. So we can do this, we can subtract from our texture coordinate uh, 0 0.5. If we preview that, we get something like this. Okay, so that zero, zero is right in the center and then it goes to negative and then it goes to positive. And if we use that as our tangent, let's see what we get. Okay, now that pinch is right in the center. And right now we have our anisotropy at negative 0.9. Let's do 0.9, positive 0.9. So it stretches out the way we want. There we go. So that kind of looks like the bottom of a, a frying pan or a pot or, you know, maybe the dial of a, an old radio that has brushed metal, machined metal knobs and things. So there we go. Now we get that cool uh, anisotropic highlight effect that's emulating as if the surface has brushed metal in that direction. So pretty easy to make these adjustments and to kind of manipulate this. Now, what if we want to tile this a bunch of times? You can't just take your texture coordinate node here and go, you know, tile three by three, that, that breaks it. So a way to do this is we pretty much want to expand how many UVs we have here. So right now it goes from zero to one. What we'll do is multiply it by however many patterns we want. So maybe I'll do five. And now it's going from zero to five. But if we take a frac node and connect that up, it will extract the decimals. So pretty much instead of going from zero to five, it'll go from zero to one, zero to one, zero to one, five times. One, two, three, four, five. So that's what that node will do. And if you're really interested in this, check out the shading and HLSL uh, coding videos that I have for, for Unreal. That'll go over a lot more of this in detail. But this is how we can kind of get that to be tiled now. And now all we have to do is subtract our 0.5. It'll push all these to have the 0, 0 in the center now. Connect that to our tangent. And there we go. Now we have a kind of an array or a bunch of these, like a grid of these nicely machined metallic radial highlights. So really easy to do this stuff uh, procedurally. And you can play around with that and use other nodes and, and really get creative with it. Now, of course, for a more complex asset, you can paint these uh, maps, these tangent maps, or extract these tangent maps and bake them down. But it's, it's a little bit more of a process. And maybe sometimes it's hard to think of it as a tangent map, as the colors that you know, Unreal is expecting most other softwares. Uh, a lot of offline renders just use a grayscale map to kind of dictate direction or angle, really. And if you're wanting to do that, there is a way that we could technically achieve this kind of effect here by using our little grayscale texture here, like this. And this is not perfect. 
you could do something a little bit more complex and, and much more accurate and better. But if you're in a pinch and you really need to take a grayscale map and put it into something or take it and, and use it in your, your tangent map for directionality of these anisotropic highlights, there is a way you can do that. You can take your black and white texture, you can create a sine node, you can create a cosine node, you can take both these nodes like this and pretty much add them or append them together. So you're going to append many and you're going to append the sine node into red channel and the cosine node into the green channel. And then to be safe, uh, we'll take the RGB out, we'll normalize this. Uh, the B channel will just be empty, have no values. This will give us something like this. Is it perfect? And you can see the, the problem with having textures. And this is a low res texture, uh, not, not very many pixels, 256 pixels by 256 pixels and low bit depth. And you start to get this artifacting because uh, it's, it's storing values within a range of zero to one and, and nothing beyond that. And it's just going to be at the mercy of whatever compression it gets uh, when it goes into the game engine. So that's one problem with it. But if we connect this now up to our tangent, it gives us that effect, which is pretty cool. If we tried just using the black and white texture map, no, that's not going to work. But we do this, sine, cosine, append them together, normalize. Now we get something that kind of works. And then if we were to use a texture coordinates node to just tile this, and I'm just going to tile this five by five times just to see how it looks. Hey, there we go. We kind of recreated that uh, same effect. So it's not perfect. There are a little bit of issues with doing this, um, but it's going to be the easiest way to kind of make this work uh, if you are stuck with a black and white map. And you can also use it for other things as well. Like if you use like a diamond gradient or something, even something as simple as this, you plug that in here, sine, cosine, you can see the result that it produces. And I previously append many node, and then we can look at what it does. And now we have these anisotropic highlights following that kind of diamond like shape. So you can kind of really play around with this and get some interesting patterns going. Uh, but hopefully it gives you a bit better understanding of how to use this, this tangent input now, and at least it'll make simple objects like pots, pans, machined or brushed metal, uh, a lot easier to produce. If you enjoyed this video or learned something new, make sure to like subscribe, press the bell notification button to be notified of future videos. And if you are part of the Patreon, you'll get access to the PDF for this video that will go over some things that we went over in a bit more detail and it'll have some other tips as well. And if you're not part of the Patreon, check it out in the description below. And don't forget to leave a message in the comments below if this helped you out, if you made something really cool with it or what other videos and content you would like to see.